Hi, this is Adam from Wax Pack Gods, and I hope you're doing well. Today I have um, one of my Christmas gifts from 2019 that I thought was pretty interesting and thought I might share with uh, you all. It is a sort of poster. I'm not sure what it's from, um, but it came from, or but it's, it's uh, labeled Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium, home of the Cincinnati Reds. Um, and I was kind of curious about, you know, what year this was from, maybe what game it was. And so I did a little research and was able to narrow it down. So I'll start out wide here and then zoom in a little bit so we can kind of get an idea of uh, what's going on on the field and maybe in the stands a little bit. So let me bring the camera down a bit. Um, try to keep the glare off as much as possible. There will be some. You can see some old style uh, clothing in the audience or in the yeah, the audience the, amongst the fans. Um, it's here, I think. Oh, where is it? Here is a Mr. Red's program kind of bent up, and here's the back of a, a Red's program. So my initial thought was that this was probably in the 80s, it looked like, from the time that I started going to Red's games. Um, but as I looked a little closer, the first thing that I could really pick out uh, was that the first baseman, I don't know, this may be a little blurry, the first baseman is wearing, I think you can see it, is wearing number 24. So that's clearly uh, Tony Perez. And then if I scanned over a bit, this is tough to see. Um, I think this is number 8, and that is Joe Morgan at 2nd. So the years that Joe Morgan and Tony Perez played together in Cincinnati were 1972 through 1976. And Perez left Cincy after that second World Series championship in 76. Um, so you can kind of see there's some, the gray road uniforms, you know, you think maybe Cubs or something. And luckily, we have a scoreboard to help us out. Um, let's see if we can get that a little clearer. It's grainy, but you can kind of get the gist of it here. So, at bat is number 26. The one and two count, one out in the seventh inning. It's the Cubs against the Reds. The Cubs are up uh, five to nothing in the seventh inning. So I won't kind of comb through the uh, game logs from baseballreference.com uh, for the Reds from 72 through 76. And I think I, I narrowed this down to one game. It was the only game I could find where the Cubs were leading after seven innings by a score of five to nothing in Cincinnati. And that was on, let's see, I'm scrolling through the computer, July 9th of 1972, when Fergie Jenkins uh, pitched for the Cubs against Don Gullett for the Reds. Jenkins had won the Cy Young Award in uh, 1971 and would win 20 again for the sixth time in a row in 72. But he pretty much shut down the Reds on this date in 72. Um, by the time this photo was taken in the top of the seventh, Jim McLaughlin had come in to relieve um, Gala, actually, uh, Pedro Bourbon relieved him first, and then McLaughlin came on to pitch starting in the sixth. Um, and he pitched, oh, did he pitch on through? Uh, he pitched uh, through the eighth inning, and then uh, Ed Sprague came on to, to pitch the ninth. Um, but the Reds were pretty much toast. Um, 
they did pick up some hits against uh, Fergie in the eighth inning uh, and one, a couple in the ninth, but he was able to shut them down and, and went ahead and to record the shutout, and it stayed 5 nothing. Um, coming out of the batter's box here is uh, number 26, Billy Williams, in the top of the seventh. So we got a lot of Hall of Famers. He hit a fly ball to left field, and you can kind of see that unfolding as uh, McLaughlin is watching the flight of the ball, and so is, uh, I think, Dave Concepcion. Uh, Dennis Mankey was starting at third, and out here and left, shagging that thing down would have been uh, Pete Rose. Um, and I think George Foster is in right field for the Reds that day. So anyway, a very interesting point in time uh, picture of the Reds playing the Cubs. The Reds would uh, do very well that year. Um, they were at 45 and 30. At that point, the Cubs were actually at 40 and 36. Um, anyway, the Reds would go ahead to win the NL West. Um, and then they won the NLCS against the Pirates, but then lost a seven-game series to the Oakland A's in the World Series. So anyway, that is what I have to show you today. Uh, kind of a time capsule in posterized form. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get more videos like this. You can find us online at waxpackgods.com and on Twitter at waxpackgods. Thanks a lot.